welcome to Knights of Roleplay, an adventuring podcast. This is an actual play 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Royalty free music provided by Kevin MacLeod, Plate Mail Games, and Tabletop Audio. And now, to adventure. Hello everyone, I'm Chris Buckner, Primary Dungeon Master for Knights of Roleplay and Adventuring Podcast. This is part two of our first adventure called New Frontiers in our campaign called Spacefarers, which is a mix of science fiction and Dungeons and Dragons, and it is based on the Spelljammer campaign setting from Advanced Dungeons and Dragons in 1989. So just a really quick recap of what happened in the New Frontiers Adventure Part 1 was that the characters, they were traveling to an asteroid called the Rock of Brawl, which is a merchant city of humans and other humanoids, uh, which is situated in wild space. So they went to the rock looking to become members of a crew of a spell jamming ship. And a spell jamming ship is a ship that essentially flies through space with what's called the spell jamming helm which is what allows the ship to fly through space. So they were traveling in transport ships. They got off the transport ships and got onto the rock and then got mixed up in a giant fight with uh, an invading force of these creatures called Niyogi, which are a slave-mongering race. And once the battle was over, there was a a captain who was a member of a race called Gif, which are a hippopotamus-like race. He said he, he had a ship and a crew, and he was looking for more crew members. And uh, the characters from our cast, they went and talked with the captain of the ship. His name is Braun. He said he would give them some missions if they wanted to, and if they did well on the missions, that they could perhaps join the crew. So he gave them some information about a crew member of his that had gone missing. He told them the last known location, which was a tavern called the Rampant Lion, and told them to go to stay at a tavern called the Laughing Beholder, which is known for its tavern keeper, who is actually a beholder. So uh, that is where the Adventure New Frontiers Part 1 left off, and now we're going to continue with the Adventure New Frontiers Part 2. We've got everybody back at the table, and so you guys um, tell me what it is that you are doing. All right, well... Mm. So you're basically stepping off of the off the loading plank for the ship, and you're basically back down onto um, Low Street, down in the dock district. Mm-hmm. District, and uh, he has directed you to the Laughing Beholder and the Rampant Lion. Let's see what I got left for funds here. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess I got enough to uh, take out a room for the two of us, or. She holds out five gold coins. Uh, the most starting right, equipment that, should have five or ten. Between what you got and what I got, it should be uh, enough for a few enough for a few days for that plus uh, meals. Should be all right. So I suggest then that we get this over with quickly so we can get paid. <laughs> yeah, it's it's five silver for a moderate, mm-hmm. basically. Um, it, you'd think I'd stoop to that level. Moderate at an end state? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Moderate sounds good. Yeah. Um, and, then a, and then a modest meal is um, three silver. So basically for, for one night at the inn and food, it's basically about a gold piece <laughs> total. Okay. So, so so between the two of us? It's not super expensive. Yeah. But the two of us have got enough for about six days. Okay. So, yeah. Let's go get paid. All right. Irvine kind of pulls her hood up a little more over her face and kind of looks around and says, I'm Ar- Irvine, by the way. I like to know who I'm traveling with. Let's, uh, what's, what's your name? I'm Strax. This is not Jolene. It's <laughs> Janie. 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 Janie, I know. Uh, does she not talk, really? Not often. Not often? Okay. Nice to meet you, Janie. Uh, and the, this is my friend, Matisse. I don't care. 
So. Ah. <laughs> All right. Keep that up, and I'll have to kill you. Fine. Let's, mm. let's keep the peace here while we're on a mission together. All right. <laughs> All right. So, shall we? Uh, if we must. All right. Head towards the end. Uh, the. The Laughing Beholder. Okay, yeah, start with the Laughing Beholder, yeah. And don't let this form fool you. Ruffian just kind of nods. <laughs> Alright, so. Janie's poking Ruffian as they walk. <laughs> Doesn't really seem to pay a whole lot of attention. Okay. He looks at you once and then kind of back again. <laughs> uh, so. Fascinated. <laughs> uh, as you make your, as you make your way. You if you want. Sorry. <laughs> As you make your way through Low City, uh, following Captain Braun's directions, you come to a building with a sign on it that reads The Laughing Beholder. And I'm going to do a music change real quick. <laughs> if you're so fascinated by him, I'll build you one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, well, see what I can do. Hmm. Okay, so as you as you make your way inside, you see a large number of creatures eating, drinking, and socializing. Behind the bar is a creature that can only be the Beholder Tavern Keeper Luigi. It has a floating spherical body about three feet across, in the center of which is a single, large, bulging eye above a wide, toothy maw. There are ten eye stalks on the top of its body. The bar itself is circular in design, with a large area in the center that stores food and drink. You see a small handful of servers assisting Luigi with his duties as he floats around the perimeter of the bar, attending to customers. He said duties. I did. (laughs) Uh, You see Luigi point one of its eye stalks at a mug, which floats over to a serving station. Then a keg of ale floats up at the eye stalk's command, filling the glass, then floating... Uh, back into place. Luigi's eye stock then directs the mug of ale to a customer at the bar. Huh, those eye stocks are pretty handy. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Yay, adventure one. Nice and <laughs> Sarah's snorting. Yay, snorting. <laughs> And Greg's like, I eat all the, the Swedish fish. Swedish <laughs> <laughs> Swedish fish. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, uh, Luigi notices you and, and calls you over to the bar. Right. Uh, he says, Park yourselves at the bar. I got food. I got drink. I got rooms. I got whatever you need. What's your pleasure? Um. We'd like, Drink first, no, room later. No, not yet. We'd like rooms, for starters. Okay. No, we want drinks for starters, then rooms. I want a room for starters. I want a drink first. It's been a long trip. <laughs> drinks, yeah, sure, I can give you a drink. Mm. What do you have? Mm. What's a house special? Ale. I'll take an ale. <laughs> All right, he uses his eye stocks to <laughs> serve you up some ale. Mm. <laughs> guy's is really stocky. <laughs> Anyone else? Do you have any fire water? I got something close to that, yeah. I'll take one of those, thank you. All right, he serves you one of those up with his with his telekinesis. Yeah. Just a nail for me as well, thanks. All right, serves that up as well. Be careful, Janie. You don't want this guy stalking you. <laughs> boo. <laughs> boo. <laughs> just, just boo. Matisse drinks it all down, slams it down on the counter. Another. Mm. Sorry. Uh, does Janie want anything? Mm-hmm. No? Okay. Hmm. I slam down by ale. Slam it down. Another. Uh, serves you up another. And Matisse um, asks for another also. Serves you up another as well. <laughs> it's like, ah, I, 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 I like you guys. Arvine kind of exchanges looks with Janie. No. And shrugs. You still haven't Just paid so- for that insult earlier. Janie's just absentmindedly playing with a little <laughs> spark. She chugs it down and then slams it down on the bar's She's top really again. Strax chugs down his ale, slams it down on the bar. Another. 
Okay. Arvine looks at the two of you and says, this is very entertaining, <laughs> but don't we have a job we're supposed to be doing soon? Mm, in the morning. You're planning on staying over? <laughs> Did we get a sense of urgency or not urgency as far as, like, trying to get out there today or... Um, I didn't. I didn't say it specifically, but we'll say that in your that in your discussions with him about uh, about the mission, that um, she's been gone for a couple of days, um, which so another day or night doesn't really probably not. Yeah, I mean okay. he's he's concerned, but you think that he also, okay. you know, he's lost crew members before. <sighs> He'd like to get her back, but it's kind of part of part of having a crew sometimes. So, I mean, right. th- there's no super urgency on it, if that's what you're asking. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So, he keeps serving you guys. <laughs> Irving kind of looks at the... What are the rules for a drinking game? Matisse, yeah. and says, Don't uh, spend all our money. Let's, let's have you each make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> you're trying to drink. <laughs> Oh dear God! <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so twenty-two. <laughs> so Strax got a twenty-two, and what did Matisse get? Uh, eleven. Eleven. <laughs> okay. Eleven. <laughs> so, so you you start to feel the deleterious effects <laughs> coming on quite strong. You're getting sweaty. You're starting to have a hard time talking, <laughs> but Strax seems perfectly fine. RV ah. walks over and kind of like puts Matisse's shoulder over her own and kind of starts to drag her away. And like, okay, that's I'm enough, Jan. Janie finally you realizes... Ah, oh, you're really. done, you slip I'm of a girl. Janie finally you, realizes yet. what's kind of going on and looks up at her brother with, like, he, he can see, like, you, you can see, like, fire in her eyes. <laughs> like, she's super mad and she goes, Roxy! <laughs> Stay out of this one! No! Hmm. <laughs> I sound like brother. Go to your room. <laughs> oh, we she, haven't bought the room telepathically yet. Telepathically says, "My room's your room, idiot." <laughs> well, I'm not gonna be. I'm not going there yet. Yes, you are. <laughs> this is all. So we I see him looking this. like he's actually talking to to you. <laughs> well, are, are you so, responding to her with uh, just out loud? Regular, that's ver- out loud. Verbally, okay. Yeah. So, 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 you're ta- so I'm talking telepathically. Yes. All and, right. And so I've got like drunk Matisse over my shoulder, and I'm looking back and forth <laughs> between the two of them. Like, what exactly is going on here? <laughs> Doesn't matter. I won anyway. It's all that matters. As long as you're not all hungover right, in the morning. Luigi mm-hmm. says, "Kind of looks like you're talking telepathically there." <laughs> don't I you guess. Tell them, what don't you don't... tell them our secrets. Oh. I can usually just tell what she's thinking. Yeah. I've got my own secrets. Sure, sure, right. if you say so, yeah, no, yeah. You don't hear anything she's saying right now. Right, that's... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, that's going to be a different habit. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we might have to find a way yeah, that but text, I can tell uh, him. Like, texting yeah, is going to be annoying. too much yeah. delay. No, but I mean, I like, I mean, you're talking mm-hmm. softly when you're talking in okay. common mm-hmm. or not, or sort of, you know, communicating with, with, with sound. Mm-hmm. When you're talking in your normal voice, I assume that that is when you were doing telepathic. Yes. yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, for the okay. listeners who yeah. who might not listen to every single episode, you could say telepathically and then just right. say what you're going to say. Okay. Okay. It's up to you. And you two can ignore it. We'll, we'll kind of we'll kind of figure it out as we oh. go. Telepathically, don't you tell them all our secrets? I know better than that. <laughs> just making sure, brother. I'm two years your elder. I think I know what I'm doing. That's what you said before this happened. We're still alive, aren't we? Do you guys want to take this conversation up to a... Or, or what? Whatever it is that you're doing, do you want to have this out here, or do you want to get a room or something? <laughs> we're we're watching them exchange looks, right? That's well, like... well, he's talking and she's looking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever it is that you're doing... <laughs> <laughs> this is really weird. I'm sorry. Really <laughs> I told you this is going to be a strange I group. I think other people are going to start to stare, and I don't really want to attract extra attention. So I, 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 I shoulder care. drunk Matisse. I'm a, I'd like a room, please. If you got one with two beds, it's perfect. Yeah, I get you a room. So he he, he sets you. I'm not drunk. 
<laughs> yes. Just three Gs to the Very wind, woman. Good. Very good, honey. <laughs> uh, he, he set you. He set you both up with what you want. So each of you are getting a room for for the pair of you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, so the brother and sister stay in a room, and then the two other, the two friends yeah, stay in a room. Yeah, and then what about the construct? Right. Does he need to be in? Um, he, he, he need a bed. He puts he puts on a gold on the counter. Okay. And and Luigi says, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, a room for you too. Got it." Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Well, I toss my gold to Luigi. I toss it into his hat. It's a Luigi. Right. He's not wearing a hat. He's got eye stocks. Okay. But he catches he <laughs> <laughs> he catches the gold telepathically. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, telekinetically in the air. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, do you guys retire right. to your rooms for the evening? Yeah. Get some water to it's bring upstairs long... for Matisse. But, okay. Yeah. It's, it's been a long. It was a long ship ride and an interesting yeah. fight. So. All right. Okay. All right. So everybody we'll start, retires to their rooms. Start in the morning. Okay. Sounds good. So long rest. Uh, correct. Maybe? Okay. Right. Yes. Yay. Yes. I'm going okay. to kill that goblin or whatever he is. You don't need and to. He needs to stop messing with me. Well, you've we had other people mess with you. Room. I know. I'm not talking about that. Okay. I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> These are our traveling <laughs> allies, <She's>, at least <laughs> for just now. Just try not to talk Keep the peace. over each other. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> this this is what Maya Heen told me to look for, so I think we need to trust in that for now. Well, it should be all right now. She's ans- she answered for that insult, so whatever. Why got- you have to be so terrible, brother? We're not living where we have to fight all the time anymore. I know it's boring. <laughs> I don't find it boring. It's very interesting to be out in the world. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always the weird one. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> We're all weird here. We're all strange here, all. <laughs> We're all the bad, yeah. <laughs> all right, so. All right, so, okay. so the night goes by, mm-hmm. and uh, you get up the next day. Uh, how exactly are you guys proceeding? Uh, All right, so I assume we probably meet, end up meeting up in the common room. Yeah, head on yep. down to yeah. breakfast when it first begins. Yeah, and ah. you can uh, you, you kind of um, you kind of overhear as you're you know during the time that you were there last night briefly, mm-hmm. um, and you were drinking and so forth, and then when you get up, um, assuming you guys have some sort of a meal or something, when you get up, you hear some of the some of the tavern. Uh, goer is basically talking about the large amount of knowledge that Luigi seems to have. Hmm. Because um, typically what you know of beholders is that they are very xenophobic and they hate not only everybody else, but they hate other beholders in particular. And hmm. each one of them individually thinks that they are like the best possible version of beholders. And sometimes they seek out other beholders just to destroy them as part hmm. of their, you know, uh, ego trip essentially mm-hmm. and so the fact that there is a friendly beholder that is here um, at all among all these people it's just it's very very rare mm-hmm. and people are talking about like they don't really know how old he is but they know that he has this reputation for having all this incredible knowledge about about mm-hmm. anything you can possibly imagine so you just kind of pick up on that from the conversations that you hear Sounds while like you're having DM breakfast is telling us we should ask him questions <laughs> uh huh. I'd like to know a little more. It is a, about, it is a potential resource. I'm not gonna lie. I'd like to know a little more about this place before we head into the unknown, where people keep disappearing. Mm. Oh, so you do uh, occasionally invest. Uh, look before you leave. All right. <laughs> when it's appropriate. <laughs> yep. And keep in mind too. You know, all of your characters, for whatever reasons, decided to come here because you wanted to get on board of a ship. And you had mm-hmm. you had some sort of desire to come here, and none of you ever been to a place like this before. I mean, you may have had space travel of some sort, but you've never been on the rock. So you know it's a floating city. You've seen this little end of it, and you have no other information whatsoever about anything on this rock. Mm-hmm. You know that there are some ships down here. This guy said he'd maybe give you some missions, and then he can maybe hire you to be part of his crew. But there's this giant, huge asteroid city here that you know nothing about. 
if we can make it here, we can make it anywhere. Mm, pretty much. <laughs> what happens here stays it's up here. up to you, Rob. Rob. <laughs> so, so you guys uh, tell me how you want to proceed. All right. So we have sit down for breakfast around the bar, motion mm-hmm. for everybody to join and kind of try to catch... Luigi's eye to see if he's got a minute to talk. Which one? Which eye? <laughs> one of uh, Luigi's eyes. Catch an eye. Any of them. Just catch an eye as it comes by. Well, that doesn't seem yeah. angry. <laughs> uh, do, do you how are you feeling like, this morning? Kind of I'm fine. How are you? Ah, much better. Yes. Glad you, were, you managed to sleep off all that ale, all that of drink. Of course I did. Of course. It <laughs> couldn't be any other way. <laughs> all right. Okay, so do you, do you wave... Try to wave Luigi over or something. Yeah, wave him over. Okay, so um, its its rear side of its spherical body is turned to you, <gasps> but you do see one of the eye stalks, like specifically look at you when you're waving at him. Mm-hmm. So then he spins around, and uh, he floats over the bar and comes over to where you are, <laughs> and he says, "Hey, uh, how you doing?" Oh, pretty good. Uh, we've heard that you're a potentially a good source of information since we're it's relatively new here. We got Isaac. some questions. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got I, I get all kinds of information. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I, I love to I love to listen to rumors, you know, of far off places and great adventures, you know. Hmm. Right now we're we're trying to help somebody out and, and we heard that they might have run afoul of a place called the uh the rampant lion. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. the the rampant lion is that that's that's not a place that you wanna stay. People, people disappear from there, you know, and, and I think that, you know, usually people go there when they first get to the rock and, they, and they, they, don't, they don't know that it has a reputation and then they disappear, you know, and it's really, it's really sad, you know. Mm-hmm. Do you know how it is that they disappear? We're, we're trying to help this person if it isn't too late. No, nah, if people knew that, then they, you know, no, no, I have no idea. No, nobody knows what goes on there exactly. Sure. <laughs> I guess. How long has this city existed? Oh, it, it, it's it's been around for uh, hundreds of years since the. Uh, I'm mean, going way back. It, it was they had a bunch of uh, uh, pirates that came and settled, settled the asteroid, and then there's been all kinds of like, you know, different people kind of rule it and stuff over the years. You know, things have changed. It's not it's not the pirate captains anymore who are running the show. You know, now it's this guy. His name is is Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew is the guy who runs the whole thing right now. Okay. But uh, you know, he's he's the, he's the current ruler of the rock. Although uh, Andrew's nephew should rightfully be the ruler after the death of Andrew's uh, brother Kalal, you know, but hmm. I try not to get involved in that kind of stuff, you know. It's just like rumors and stuff that I hear, you know. Ever hear any interesting rumors of the Star Runner? Uh, I, I, I know it's a ship that's uh, in port right now. You know, no, it, it, nothing interesting of this Captain Braun? <coughs> hey, he's one of those hippo guys. Mm. So, he hasn't a. So he hasn't earned any glory himself, huh? No, nah, not particularly. He's uh, he's relatively new. I'd say he's been in maybe like you know in the past year or so, and he, you know I think he does like salvage missions and stuff like that. Mm. All right. Well, that's what he claims. Are there any like interesting landmarks or shops or something that you would recommend that we stop through while we're here? Well, there's. I mean, you know, the. the this entire asteroid is full of, you know, shops and merchants and, and, and things like that, you know. So there's there's about, uh, like, 12,000 citizens living here, you know, on the asteroid, made up of uh, many different groups. There are, f- the, the, there are four distinct classes of traders on the rock, you know, made up of trading companies and uh, merchant houses and small merchants and independent captains. There are also a, a lot of guilds and societies and orders and houses and companies and mercenaries and and, and 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 privateers you know what can you tell us about a, a gif captain named braun uh well, well he's I was just asking about yeah. he was just asking about him he's the captain I, of the he's the I, captain I, I of the star runner ship i asked about both oh i'm sorry i'm not fully here i apologize <laughs> that's okay. repetitive my bad all right so all, all he said to him all he said yeah. to, to strax yeah. was that he's relatively new and then he runs salvage missions as far as he knows okay mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess, given we're going to have to go to the not good part of town to check out the rampant line, even though we don't plan to stay any longer than we have to, uh, is there anything, any specific dangers or stuff that we should look out for? Stuff you know about? 
Well, you know, there's um, there's a lot of like thieves guilds, you know, and and more and than one. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. There's um, you see the the underbarons are the are the criminal lords of of of, of the city, you know, and uh, in any given area of the city, you know, stores, shops, and craftsmen, you know, they're under the protection of one one of another thieves guild. The master of whom is is usually an underbaron. They pretty much rule, you know, the the thieves guilds. Janie's Janie's become quite taken with one of the beholder's eyes. (laughs) Okay. And is just kind of like following it around. (laughs) Okay. He. uh, Janie, you can't have it. Hmm. He kind of notices your curiosity, and he kind of. You know, rotates as he floats a little bit towards you because he can see that you're you're kind of interested in him. And he goes, "Hey, what's what's your name?" J- J- Janie. 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 Do you like stories, Janie? I love stories. Yeah. Okay. So, I heard a rumor once that all of existence is contained within the imaginations of a weird class of beings beyond God who call themselves role players. Oh. Isn't that interesting? That's really cool. Yeah, it's fascinating. Don't. Where do you fit into that world? Oh, I just like to gather information, you know? Oh. I like to hear stories and stuff. Oh. I've never met anybody like you. Yeah, if you did, you'd probably be dead. Oh. Yeah, the, the, the I'm, I'm what's called the beholder. Oh. You see, beholders usually want to kill other beholders or anything that they even see. Why are you different? I'm not really sure. I just I just want to learn things. I don't want to kill anyone. I guess I, you could say I'm kind of a rogue. I, I like you. Oh, I like you too. Thank I you very much. I don't want to kill anybody either. Nah, not me either. I got to get rough with some of the customers sometimes, but you know, oh. that that that's what all these stocks are for. And he, like, oh. His like stocks on his head all kind of move around. Oh. <laughs> he like shoots a green ray and like disintegrates a mug that's... on the counter. <laughs> Speaking of things that did she get... She cowers behind her brother and stops talking. Yeah, I mean, like, like, like <laughs> everybody stops for a second as they see this green ray shoot out and disintegrate this mug <laughs> because they know what that is. <laughs> and they all like, <laughs> everybody stops for a second. And I then, and then he, you he, he goes back to talking. He's like, no, 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 I'm fine. Oh, okay. I'm fine. I was just showing you something really cool, you know? Oh, okay. That was scary. Cool. cool. <laughs> I don't, um, don't want to see it again. Speaking of scary things, what do you know about the Niyogi who attacked yesterday? Why would they be doing something like that? Oh yeah, the Niyogi, those bastards. Yeah, yeah, they uh, they they like to like take slaves and stuff. You know, they like to capture people. You know, and sell them on the slave market. You know, I mean, there, there's there's even a rumor that there's a slave market here on the rock. Wait, you, you sell your slaves? There's a, yeah, they sell slaves. Of course, they sell slaves. Why would you do that? They're way too useful. I'm not quite sure you understand him, buddy. You take people and you sell them. That's slavery. Do you understand that concept? Why would you sell them, though? For money. That's what people do on the rock. Slave trade. You ever heard the word slave trade? Well, sure, but... Yeah, exactly. That's what happens. Uh, If you're a really good slave, you get sold for a lot of money. Or you you get kept because you're really good. No, you keep the good ones because they're the ones that work. Yeah, or you make a lot of money off of them and try to get some other ones. Uh, whatever. Did you happen to see... You're not going to make much money on this rock, buddy. Yeah. Did you happen to see oh, anyone who was them. with uh, <laughs> the person we're looking for before she disappeared? Uh, oh. Come again? We haven't told them who we're Oh. Like, it's... My bad. That's... <laughs> <laughs> are, are you looking for someone? Who are you looking for? Apparently, this Captain Braun, uh, how he became a captain, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ha- is missing a crewman, this uh, Zed. Um, a bird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eric Cochran, yeah. Er- 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, he's asked us to go see if we can find him. Apparently, it was her. around her, whatever, bird. Uh Apparently, uh, she was last seen somewhere around the uh, uh, the rampant line. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's why the questions. And I got you. I got you. Yeah. So, so she was staying at the inn and she disappeared, right? Yeah. That's the story. We, we don't know. We're gonna have to try to find out what happened to her. 
Yeah, she she probably disappeared there. Um, again, I mean, there, there, there could be all kinds of explanations. Usually, the only people that go that stay at the Rampant Lion are the ones who don't know any better. They just arrive, and then no one ever sees them again. Yeah, mm. there could be a lot of reasons why those people disappear. You know, there could be like a half a dozen for all I know. I mean, I really don't know, but um, uh-huh. you, you so you're looking for this so you're looking for this person. It's a, it's a crew member, a Captain Braun. That that's what he said. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of dangers you got to watch out for. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of like, you know, people that are gonna try to take your money. Mm-hmm. You know, there's like whores on the street and stuff like that, and they got some muscle with them. You know, people are trying to sell things, people are trying to steal things. You you know, you got to kind of watch, watch your gold bags and stuff like that because people will just cut them right off. Mm-hmm. You, you won't even realize that it's gone. Some of them are really good at it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and there really isn't a whole lot of like law and order here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, most citizens they believe in, uh, you know, policing themselves. You know, serious crimes can be reported to the magistrate. Who can get some guys from the magistrates to watch to take care of things, and you know there's there's a little bit of military, you know there's like there's like the army of brawl, you know consists of the royal guard and the regulars, and, and, and the militia, you know and there's also the the royal navy of brawl. I assume that they'll be pretty recognizable if we see them. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, people just kind of try to mind their own business, you know, even if there's, you know, the, the. Um, Magistrates, um, what did I just say? Hold on. Never interrupt the DM when he is expounding. No, I, I just forgot. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to recall. <laughs> um, oh yeah, the the watch. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, like if the if the magistrates watch, you know, see something going on, you know, a lot of times they'll just kind of look the other way if it's not that bad, you know. Mm-hmm. But you know, if you get anywhere near the palace, you know the royal, the, you know the royal god, they'll 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 take you out right away. You know, Prince Andrew is very uh, very specific about making sure that nobody gets anywhere near the palace. You know, palace at that big place we saw. Oh yeah, a yeah, yeah, way up at the in? top of High City. Yeah, um, yeah. So stay out of High City. Gotcha. Yeah, you won't really be What's able. To, high city? You, you won't be able to get in there. It, it's a walled off section, and, and it, it's the high pot up there where where Lord Andrew lives, and he has all his royal god. You mm-hmm. know. So I mean, sometimes he lets people in there when he has like these big banquets, you know. But otherwise, you can't get you can't get past a wall. You have a funny accent. Yeah. Where you come from? From like all over. All over. I've been all over the place, and then I kind of settled here. Oh. I mean. Yeah. Huh. Is there any other information I can help you with? Hmm. Well, I don't think we're going to get much more until we go. Might as well go check that out. Hopefully, right. we'll be we'll get back here yeah. after okay. if we need to. Toss me another goal. Say, keep my room warm, I guess. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. He catches it with his uh, mm-hmm. telekinetic powers again. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Anything you need, let me know. <laughs> well, I guess it's... <laughs> <laughs> she waves. So, <laughs> Don't be flirting with the hand. Janie, Janie waves. <laughs> waves with a stock. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of his eye stocks kind of wave like arms. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Probably don't want to be flirting with the barkeep, says. Mm-hmm. You don't think you'd want to kiss that mouth. <laughs> 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 well, I guess we're not going to get anything until we go take a look at this, what was it, Rampin' Lion place. Wow. All right. So... So, shall okay. we? You guys head over in that direction? Yeah, okay. Kinda... Ruffian seems ready to go. He just nods. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't ask any questions of, the, of, of, of Luigi. And, but, I mean, he listens intently, though, because um, you, you're you not sure, but you think maybe he hasn't been here very long either. So all the information that he was giving you guys, you think Ruffian was you know, listening intently Observing because, because he, wants, he wants to know about that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we might as well head over there. Okay. Um... I like make sure to put like my pouch and everything like inside my armor as much as I can just to protect my belongings and like, mm-hmm. like okay. coins and stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you're so you're I leaving. Armor. <laughs> you're, you're, I just walk around and look until last eight hours, right? So for an, okay. an old. I'm gonna change the music real quick. There <laughs> we go.
Okay, so you head over to the rampant lion. <laughs> okay. yeah. So as you make your way through Low City, following Captain's uh, Captain Braun's directions, you uh, arrive at uh, one of the many alleyways surrounding the Lesser Market, which is a merchant area with stalls mostly run by peddlers and small merchants. Uh, as you move down the alleyway, you come to the second door on the left. As Captain Braun had indicated, you see a small plaque next to the door that reads The Rampant Lion. You see a group of men come into the alley from behind you, shortly after which another group of men enter the opposite end of the alley. The groups quickly close in before one of them says, Hey, can I uh, interest you in an adrenaline shot? It's only 500 gold pieces. They sell for as much as 1,000 in some places. What do you say? Are you interested? Are you interested? No. Sorry. That's richer I have no than need our for blood. such things. Nah, I mean this 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 asteroid, it's kind of a dangerous place. I think I think maybe you should maybe buy at least one adrenaline shot. You're really gonna need it. Huh. Put my hand on my sword hilt and say I'm sorry, that's not gonna happen. He he looks down at your at your hand on your sword hilt. And he says, um, if you're thinking that this uh, situation might turn violent, that's just the kind of thing that you would need an adrenaline shot to fix. What do you say? 500 gold pieces. Apparently you don't understand no. Apparently you don't understand how dangerous it is here. I'm guessing that you're all kind of new. Am I right? That's for me to know and for you to try to find out. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to see what you got on you. Anything that's valuable. If you just want to hand it over. You'll have to take it off my dead body. All right. Wakazashi drawn. Both. <laughs> all right, everybody roll initiative. <clears throat> they all draw weapons. I didn't draw a weapon. <laughs> but the rest of them do. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of creating of casting create oh. bonfire at his feet before we started this, but I didn't get a chance. I was gonna shocking grasp him, but <laughs> oh, that would have been awesome. <laughs> Hold that one for the future. She has been pra- playing with her electricity. I'll take a seventeen initiative. I wasn't necessarily gonna force a combat encounter. I, I like I was open to the idea of, of you guys trying to do a variety of different things for that. I'm 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 not Saying that anything was was bad, I'm just. Saying. I'm not that fast a thinker. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I just don't want you to think that I, that I was trying to force you into it. I mean, I was like, if they come up with something clever, if they do this, that, or the other thing, like things I'm not expecting, I'm not going to force a combat encounter on you guys. He's yes. just like, no, no, thank you. But you guys seem to be having fun with the with the you know acting tough thing. So I'm like, all right, it's fine, <laughs> totally Jesus fine. Tough. Like uh, times are tough. All right, so uh, so my dudes. Well, <laughs> okay. I missed a roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my guys are on. Oh, that's a that's a low number. All right, Janie, what do you got for initiative? Nineteen. That's pretty good. And Matisse, twenty-one. Nice. nice. And Strax, seventeen. You guys are all rolling pretty high here. And Arvine. Ten. Okay, I'm going to set up the initiative board here. And put on some sci-fi shootout music. Actually, they're not really using sci-fi weapons, so I'll just do regular combat music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, we're not going to play dark combat. <laughs> Sorcerers in space. <laughs> yeah, one. <laughs> 
Okay. So initiative board. So here we go. Matisse is up at the top. Then Janie, then Strax, then Arvine, then my dudes. I'm trying not to chew into the mic. <laughs> we totally forgot to uh, loot the the Neogi. Yeah, they're insects. What are they gonna they have? Had anything? Uh-huh. Although Money. I might have found something Money. useful on them. Tasty Money. legs, maybe. <laughs> I mean, they pretty much had their cloaks and their bodies and their weapons. Oh, well. I wonder if yeah. they tasted like lobster. Ew. I mean, the, the, thought, the thought kind of occurred to you that based <laughs> on the number of them and, like, the sheer size of the population here, <clears throat> that they were trying to make some kind of a statement that this was kind of a suicide run. I mean, you don't think that they even thought that they could get beyond the low city and they were just, you know... Zealots. Probably trying to make a statement, yeah, some kind of zealots or something like that. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, so top of the initiative order for round one. Oh, actually, let me put out some dudes. Hold on. Dudes. Dudes. Okay. Uh, oh, actually, yeah. Let me let me put down some buildings. Uh, if you could, if you guys could take the dungeon tiles off of there, please. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Where's hey, Ruffy we on the oh, initiative? Or is he not? Oh, you're right. I have to roll for him. That's okay. right. Put your group of minis right there in the middle of that alley. And if you wouldn't mind putting uh, three of my thugs in front and three behind. Like right on the... the yeah. Line with the yes. I mean, I mind... <laughs> it's all good. Uh, Ruffian should be. should be out there. Oh, yeah, he's out there, yeah. That's the, no, that's the one we're not using. <laughs> oh, Greg, you actually... Oh, yeah, you have you have a mini there. Okay. All right, so... The mini's tall. <laughs> Why is your mini always in this, like, epic launching that takes position? so much room? It's <laughs> <laughs> a cool mini. <laughs> All right, so top of round one. It's a maxi mini. We have Matisse. All right. And again, we have we have six enemies, so they're going to be A, B, C, D, E, and F. Go ahead, Matisse. I'm going to move up, and I'm going to attack. Which way? That way. Wow. Okay, so Matisse moves up. Laser sword. Chainmail, shield, and laser sword. Attacking Thug B. Thug B. Oops, that's wrong. Twenty to hit. Twenty definitely hits. <laughs> and that's going to be for ten damage. Ten damage. Your laser sword slashes right through his chest and he just... He has like the stunned look on his face of surprise, and he falls back dead. <laughs> well, that was fast. I don't know. I think that deserves an intimidation roll for the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. You do see the two guys that are, that are on either side of him kind of like give each other a look, but they don't seem to break. <laughs> do I have intimidation? <laughs> um, okay. So then it is, uh, Janie is next in the initiative order. Were you done? Can I intimidate him? Um, if you're trying to make like an, an intimidation check, usually certain checks during combat require an action. Okay. You know, like I mean, on, on your turn, if you want to yell out and try to make an intimidation check. Well, actually, you know what? No, no, hold on. 
you you can speak like up to ten words according to the rules oh, yeah. on your turn. Okay. So so if you want to pick like one of them and try to make an intimidation check, I will allow that. Okay. I turn to Monster C and I say, "Do you want some of the same that the other guy got?" Okay. So make an intimidation roll with advantage. That was did- words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Fail. Well, th- tell me what the highest, highest result was. Four. So it was eight. So it was eight. Okay. Um, he still seems a little bit shaken by what happened, but you don't seem to intimidate him further. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You think that this guy's seen a lot of combat. He's, he's used to seeing people die, but he was still a little bit surprised, though. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Janie, you're up. Mm. Janie turns and goes to the middle guy here. Okay. And says, I don't need adrenaline shots. I got adrenaline shock. (laughs) Cash I can grasp? Uh Uh-huh. Okay, so electricity forms in your hand. I think it's advantage, right? Um, They're wearing leather armor. Oh. Oh. Dang. (laughs) AC 15. AC 15. It definitely zaps him good. Okay. And that'll be for three lightning. Three lightning, and which uh, letter is it? E. E. And <laughs> no reactions, right? Yeah. And, and yes, the guy gets no reactions. I can't take reactions until the start of his next turn. So, so he's, using, he's using a cutlass, and you basically grab onto the, the end of it. Mm-hmm. And at first he seems confused, and then all of a sudden, bzzz. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, okay. Adrenaline shock. Uh, wild surge roll, please. Oh boy! <laughs> I want to fly again. Seventeen. Seventeen. No, no wild surge. Okay. All right. So we have the the diva paladin who ran up and killed the guy in one hit with the laser sword, and then we have the Kalashtar. Kalashtar, yeah. Kalashtar. Uh, wild Mage Sorcerer, who used Shocking Grasp. And now we are to Strax, the Hobgoblin Artificer. Hobgoblin. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well. Unusual of you to take point. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Um, Straxy. <laughs> start with, um, <laughs> since she did decide to run up front, I will cast Sanctuary on her as my bonus action. Uh, as a bonus action? Yeah, Sanctuary is a bonus action. Oh, so. alright, cool. That's what, plus two AC or something? Uh, no. Um, I'm thinking of Shield of Faith, honey. That's right. And no, the no, san- way Sanctuary works is they have any, to make a wisdom saving they have, throw. If they target her, oh, that's right. they have to make a wisdom or saving throw. Or they can't throw. attack her. Or they have that's to pick right. a target. That's a great spell. <laughs> um, and then I'm just gonna... Halbert E. All right. So you attack. Oh, that's right. You got the attack reach. Attack E with your yeah, halberd. buddy. The 10 foot reach. That's awesome. Uh, the D10. Where's my D10? There's my D10. The blade swings down. Ow. Oh. Oh. Eight. 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 He steps out of the way and it slams into the ground. Careful Don't make me dull my blade. that thing. Anything else, Drax? <laughs> uh, nope, that's my good. Okay. Arvine. You're up, Arvine. <laughs> Arvine kind of sidesteps. She's already got the two swords out because she drew them during that Encounter. conversation. Okay. Wait, you're just going to yep. leave your partner yeah, at the fine. other end all around? I'm going to concentrate damage because I <laughs> <laughs> help my allies. And you're using um, two wakazashis? Is two that right? wakazashi, basically. Short, okay. <laughs> yeah, short swords. <laughs> yeah. So she swings one down on E. It's going to hit for AC, uh, let's see here, 23. That will hit Thug it's E. It's going to hit for six piercing damage. Six. Okay, yeah. you cut that guy down. All right. All right, and then so without even... I think a Wakazashi is a slashing weapon. Just splitting oh. hairs. 
It, it's I so reskinned a short sword because awesome. it doesn't exist in the D and D Beyond system, and the short sword shows the pokey damage. So gotcha, gotcha. What. But anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> so then without even pausing, she swings the other sword up at F since he's right there. F this. All right. <laughs> F that. F him. Um, and then that is going to be AC 19 to hit. AC 19 does connect. That'll do five piercing damage. You get bonus. Five piercing roll. damage? Yes, because I took dual dual fighting style. Oh, cool. Yeah, my, my cool fighter thing. thing. I'm sorry, honey, which, which um, letter? Okay. On F. F. Five damage. Okay, you do bloody F with that attack. Okay. Mm-hmm. Turn and kind of glare at the others and say, "How many more of you have to die?" <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> uh, so okay. that's it for me. That's it for you. Okay. Yeah, because that would have been my bonus action to make the offhand attack. Right. Okay. So you see, so so it's 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 the thug's turns, and you see Thug F take out this this small like metal tube it's about five inches and it has like um glowing green compartments on it all along its length he takes it out and he sticks it in his neck <laughs> he sticks it in the in his neck and pushes this button and he kind of seems to have like this ah <sighs> kind <Ew>. of wonderful <laughs> feeling and uh, you see you see uh, some of his wounds heal up oh boy and he seems like he's really happy is he still bloody he is not bloody anymore. Oh no. boy. Well, that's not good. Hmm. That stuff looks useful. But does he do anything else? Or is that... uh, yeah, hold on one second. I gotta stuff write some stuff down here. Hold on. Yeah. I have to see if there's any side effects. <laughs> By the way, I don't see Ruffian on the board. He's right there. He's not on the initiative. Oh, it was on the initiative board. Thank you. <laughs> Always trying to diss the NPC. <laughs> <laughs> or ditch. Okay. Uh, sorry, initiative for Ruffian. Somehow, uh, you I rolled a one. Okay, so he goes last anyway. So we'll just put him last <laughs> on the board. Okay, so uh, let's reflourish. So, so, so F still makes an attack with the uh, with the cutlass that he has in his hand. So, who's in front of F? That's me. That one. All right, Arvine. All right, so I need where is my D six? Here we go, D six. All right. AC fifteen. Miss. Oh, you just barely managed to move out of the way. And. D is here. D is in front of uh, Ruffian. Yeah, in front of Ruffian. Yep. So I'll take attack on Ruffian. Ooh, critical on Ruffian. Oh. Ouch. Poor Ruffian. Ooh, it's a lot of damage. Uh, he takes eight, nine damage. Oh. All right, I'll fix you up. All right, so he is bloodied. Dang. Ouch. Uh, and then we have Thug A and Thug C, who is attacking the Paladin. So here we go. Uh, AC 11. That will miss. Uh, bangs off your shield. And then second attack, the other person, AC 16. That will also miss. All right. Again, you th- well, this time you, you parry it with your long sword, with your, mm-hmm. sorry, your laser sword. Uh, and doosh, then, doosh. and then it is Ruffian's turn and <laughs> he will, uh, heal who he feels is the most deserving, which is himself. How selfish. <laughs> Valid strategy. <laughs> if, he, if he's not awake, you can't heal other people. This is true. All right, he is no longer bloody. Yeah, there's dilemma. Uh, but that, that, that's, his, that's his turn, though. Uh, so then we're going back up to uh, the top of round two, and we still have uh, A, C, D, and F left for the thugs. All right. What's that, Sarah? ACDC? ACDC. <laughs> ACDC. <laughs> to the top. Okay, round two. Matisse, you're up, buddy. 
All right. Then I'm going to go and attack monster number C. Number C, huh? <laughs> letter, letter two. Letter two. Letter two. Bye. Letter two, Bye. Look, Bye. Letter two or number C. Your mom. Letter C. With the laser sword. And that is going to be 18 to hit. 18 will hit. And that's going to be for 8 damage. And which one is this now? C? C. C, C is blade. Okay, they have 9 hit points. You slash him right through the side with your laser sword. He's still standing. He looks very badly wounded. <laughs> All right, Janie. It's good. good. <sighs> okay, she's gonna reach over to. F's been hit, right? We don't Correct. know if he's fully. Yes. She's gonna reach over to F and and grab his cutlass. <laughs> and zap him. Okay. Zap. Attempt to zap. Zap attempt. He seems like he's on cloud nine right now. He's so happy. <laughs> well, maybe this will wake you up. AC 20. Uh, that will hit. For four lightning. Okay, it zaps him, but he just, he kind of goes. And he can't take reactions until the start of its next turn. Okay. Yeah. He, he says... Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, hot. <laughs> Anything mm-hmm. else? Um. No. Okay. So, uh, Strax, you're up. Uh, all right. Well, you're, you guys seem to be okay. Oh, I have to roll my. Yeah. Oh yes, oh, yes. Surge. Wild surge. Yeah. Roll your surge. No 18. surge. Okay. Okay. Still got it. All right. And gonna move over there and see if he can finish off C with his long axe. His halberd? Halberd, yeah. <laughs> All right, hobgoblin with a halberd. Nope. Natural one. <laughs> I whiffed. I'm sorry. It, it, it's, hot, it's running hot and cold. Okay. So your halberd hits the wall next to him, <laughs> and there's a window there, and it opens up, and there's a woman. She says, What's going on? <gasps> Get back inside, Close the door. <laughs> <laughs> Close the window again. Uh, all right, Arvine. All right, so uh, two wakazashi on F. Two wakazashis on F. Right. He is flying high. Oh, boy, that's not a good one. It's going to be uh, AC9. I'm assuming that doesn't hit. AC9. He kind of like, he's just kind of like moving around right. in a weird way, and you miss him because he's so happy. Good. So happy. That will hit. That's going to be like AC. Oh, I can't roll damage. Uh, so AC, let's see here, 24 to hit. 24 uh, will definitely hit. Yeah, and that will hit for five. Five. Piercing. Okay, uh, you take, he takes some damage, but uh, okay. he's still not bloody. And he, All right. he, he looks wounded, but he seems very happy. <laughs> okay. Um, Action point, one more hit. Action point, all right. Yep. Right. I myself not to drum. No drumming. All right, AC 16. <laughs> AC 16 okay. will hit. Uh, for six piercing damage. Okay, so he is bloodied again. And, uh, he seems way too happy considering all the grievous wounds <laughs> that he has. <laughs> yeah, that's me. All right. So then it is the thugs. Okay, so... Um, so Thug F, still with his sword in one hand and what you assume is an adrenaline shot on the other, sticks himself in the neck... Again. Presses the button again. You see some of the green liquid go away. Oh, jeez. He kind of like shudders like... Ah. It's like... <laughs> oh. And then he takes a swing at you. Creepy. 
Oh, that's mean. He can take that stuff as a bonus action. Oh, wait. I forgot he gets advantage on that after he shoots himself up. Uh, AC 21. That will hit. For seven. Ouch. Bloody. He says, ah, how do you like it? (sighs) All right. And then the one in front of Ruffian will attack Ruffian again. And we'll miss. And then two on the paladin. Attack number one. Clangs off your shield. Attack number two from the other guy. Again, you deflect it away with your laser sword. <laughs> then it is Ruffian. Being tanky's fun. <laughs> All right, Ruffian. Um, so you can't really get away from that guy. Uh, he'll drop a healing word on... Arvine. You could step here. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, move and be into flanking. Uh, actually, He's been flanking but. No, no, he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. Okay. <laughs> he's just, just going to use a healing word. Okay. So you heal five. Okay, good. Thank you. That's true. Level uh, one healing okay. words is still pretty awesome. Okay. Um, <laughs> is F bloody or not at this point? Um. Yes, F F is bloody. Still, yes, bloody, still bloody, even with the adrenaline shot. Correct. Okay. Yes. Although Ruffian will actually, that was a bonus action, so he'll take an attack there we go. on the guy in front of him. Uh, and he hits for five damage. What letter is that? D. 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 So D is bloodied. And uh, that, that was with the staff. Um, Janie, <laughs> Janie, you are up. No. No. Matisse is up. Sorry, Matisse. I'm trying to Matisse. skip Matisse. Nice. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, attack letter C again with right. my laser sword. All right. Laser, laser sword to thug C. And nice. that is going to be 16 to hit. 16 definitely hits. Is it more than one? For four. <laughs> four damage. Okay. You decapitate that guy with your laser sword. Oh, nice. <laughs> <Good work. laughs> and I'm going to use an action point All right. to attack Action point a. to attack A. Okay. So we have A, D, and F still up. Critical. You back. Critical. Critical. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that is going to be for t- fifteen. Fifteen. Damn. Damn. Yeah. Cut off one of his arms, and with a shocked look on his face, he falls over dead. <laughs> nice. <coughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, Matisse. Uh, all right. Guess you can you, hold your own in a fight after all. Close yes. To the other side. You're going to stay there or move? Uh, I will move up close to where everyone else is. To close the gap. Yeah. No, no, no. That's, uh, here, maybe? That seems fine. Okay. All right, so then it is Janie. Oh, she's going to turn to the letter D. Okay. And go for the shock again. <laughs> All right, so you reach out with electricity on your hand. Shocking the hogs. AC 21. That will definitely hit. For four lightning on D. Four lightning on D. Uh, You put your hand on that guy's chest, and you shock him right in the heart, and he falls over dead. Yes. Good work. And with him gone, I'm going to go... Gadunk, gadunk. Um, okay. No, sure. What? Nothing. I thought, I thought wrong. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, yes, okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so F kind of looks over at, at the day guy next to him and he's like, bummer, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, F that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Strax, yeah. you're up, Strax. Oh, okay. Oh. I don't think I'm even going to get a chance to. <laughs> Depends. He hasn't been hitting. 
I mean, he. I think Sharks gets flanking though. I do not. No, no, not because he's not in because he's not range. adjacent. That's right. Okay, never mm-hmm. mind. No, I'm because I'm ten feet away. I have to be right up on him. Right. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but Arvine, duck. Uh, AC nineteen. AC nineteen does hit. Uh, Yay! For you swing the halberd and Arvine ducks out of the way. Uh, for a seven. 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 Nice. <laughs> seven. Okay. Seven. Still bloodied and still up. Still bloodied, oh still up. Lord. Slash oh. him on the shoulder. He's like, oh, oh. man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Arvine, you are up. All right. So with advantage. Short sword on the dude. The dude. The dude. Of the dude. Oh, okay. That'll be AC 23. 23 hit. hits. Uh, yep. For eight. For eight. Uh, eight is great. So you, uh, you, st- you, you, you stab at him uh, with the with the Wakazashi. And <laughs> you, you stab into him with the Wakazashi and he kind of... Uh, like looks down at the blade and says, Bummer man <laughs> and then falls over dead. <laughs> <laughs> and Arvine's just kind of there like what the ash looking at. <laughs> so there is an adrenaline shot with with four uses on the ground. Alright. Anything else? I loot the room. I guess we can pick mm. it up and see what it is that it actually does. Hmm. Right. Obviously it helped that guy. I'm not touching it that. Does. I'm going to make an arcana check on that. Arvine picks it up and hands it off to, to the person who looks like uh, you can make stuff. You can make an arcana check on it, sure. Ten. Ten. I mean, obviously it had some kind of a narcotic mm-hmm. effect. Could um, a medicine check try to tell me what's in it? Um, you can do a medicine check on his body to determine what it was doing to him, sure. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go for it. Sorry, 10 wouldn't have got me much than, than more than 18. what I observed. 18. Okay, so you can see that um, his, 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 his body is basically, it looks like it's been, it looks like his muscles are very fatigued and it looks like his, his body was really severely overtaxed. By by something. I mean, obviously, you think it was the, the adrenaline shot. If you didn't see him sticking himself with this thing, you would just think that he was like 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 very exhausted, like he was very very tired. His muscles are very weak. You're not really sure what else beyond that, but it didn't look like it was good for him, despite what you saw happen. <laughs> How much of that do you tell me? I this 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 man is. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will speak telepathically. <laughs> His body's very worn out, very tired. He didn't. He wasn't going to last very long, and that wore, wore off. Hmm. Oh, this, Do you think no it would have killed him? <laughs> Keep going. I, 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 I think our, our, our attacks killed him, but his body was was. Pretty, it, it's really beat up. His muscles are pretty mm. much gone. So probably, all right. So, so stuff so probably you... gives you a good boost of energy, but takes you a while to recover from afterwards. I'd say longer than a while, brother. Probably a little. Okay, a long while. Well, he so did we, take two shots. Do we hear you talking to yourself, or are you? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. I look at. I, I. I think we should take it just so it's not laying here on the street. Worst case, maybe we could sell it for something. Eh. Might be worth studying. So, so John Strax knows that it's a magic item. Mm-hmm. Strax knows that if he sits with it for an hour, he can identify the properties. Okay. Hmm. Or if you have the identify spell. Not prepared, but yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it is it is it is chemical in nature, but you know it's definitely magical. Okay. Be very careful with that, brother. All right. I'll, st- I'll stash it away, examine it later. We have some time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so... Anything, you, else on, anything else of interest? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, have, they have their weapons, and, and they do have some gold on them. Let me uh, 
determine some gold here. Yeah. Loot the bodies. Loot the bodies. Hey, if they're selling these things for five hundred a pop. Right. That's some serious <laughs> money. Yeah, Even it's a question if we of don't keep it. That's some serious money. So they have it's a lot of healing potions. They they have thirteen hundred gold among all of them. Ooh, okay. 1,300 well, gold? Yeah. Nice. We don't uh, need to um, work for this cotton guy anymore. <laughs> Actually, it's um, there's only about 10 or 20 gold on everybody except for that one guy who had the adrenaline shot. He has, the, he has the rest of the money. So yeah. 1,500. Yeah. <clears throat> four, so. Oops. I mean, obviously, he, he was pushing the adrenaline. That's what he does. You know, he had money on him because he must have made a couple of sales. You, you figure that most likely he wouldn't keep that a lot of money on him in general, but if he had just made a couple of sales, he would still have the money on him, and that's what he, that's what you found. So that'd be three twenty-five a piece. Are we mm-hmm. just gonna split it? Yeah. Okay cool. with that. Uh, did you split that with Ruffian? Oh, God. everyone always forgets the NPC. Give me a minute. Now there's <laughs> ogres. Thirteen hundred. Ruffian kind of holds his hand out, but doesn't five. but doesn't say anything. Two sixty. 260. All right, 260 gold each. How do I... Is there someplace on D&D Beyond, Greg, where you can add, yes, add the gold? Yes, there is. Equipment. equipment. Okay. And then hit currency. Oh. And, and you then can you go... can pick the type okay. down at the bottom there. So How much? Gold. Type it 260. in and hit add. Right, but what do we use on the rooms? Um, I've silver. spent two on the room so far, but that's for my rooms. <laughs> One on how much did you what spend was on the beer? normal rooms for one gold, right? I think that was all covered um, by, the, by the gold. So, uh, <laughs> and how much for drinks for, for an in stay per day oh, from the prices you have, if it's off. moderate, it's five silver pieces per day for moderate. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. and uh, meals per day again, first for modest, it's three silver, so okay, eight silver so around eight. that, around that so up to gold for the drinks. Yeah, the gold, yep. okay, so. And tip. So one gold. So that was one a gold. nine. Okay, so, so basically two sixty nine now. <laughs> well, actually, I'm pretty sure there's. Um, one. I- I'm forgetting it, but there's. Th- there's something that just kind of covers all of your expenses for a day. There's like a chart. I don't think it's on this DM screen, but yeah, but I'll figure I'll figure that out. The modest living. Yeah, there's yeah. A, there's I a lifestyle. Think modest living is one gold a day. Well, lifestyle right. modest yeah. is one gold. Yeah. Piece. Yeah. Yeah. I know that because it's right there. Yes. It's in our character sheets. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, I don't see it on my sheet here anywhere, but... It's on my yeah. character I mean, If you just want to spend one gold piece a day, that's that's fine. That's because it's bad sheet. Uh, Holy sheet. Terrible, John, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so... Uh, so, basically, you, you... So, so you're in this alley. You have all these dead thugs around you. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have... Uh, what you think is an adrenaline shot, mm-hmm. um, and and there's the door to uh, the rampant lion. Yeah. Um, what is your plan right now? What do you guys want to do right at this moment? Anybody Let's still? Go into the rampant. Well, is anybody still bloody? I see some blood the, sitting there. There's a bloody marker. Uh, I think that's on you. you. Okay, well I'm not bloody <laughs> anymore because I got killed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, I wasn't even hit, so... Okay. We have a pile of blood right here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Return it to our stockpile of blood. Yeah. Right. Pile of blood. Okay. Okay, so you guys you guys are going to go into the inn? Might as well. Might as well. Okay. Uh, go into the inn? Go into the inn? In-in? I mean, it's just a, it's just a, just a yeah. fight to me, so whatever. Okay, so um, I'm actually going to stop us there for the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's eleven o'clock, and and I think this is a, this is a good amount of content for our first uh, episode. Mm-hmm. So that was cool. That was fun. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you. <laughs> so we are using experience points for this campaign, which is not something I've done in quite a while, but I wanted to give it another shot here. Uh, so the let me go over this real quick. The first encounter was um, first encounter was thirty eight. Uh, the second one was thirty each, and then I'm also going to give XP. Basically, uh, I'm going to give like a, a session reward just for the fact mm-hmm. that people were here and they were playing. Um, which uh, let's see, where is it? 
Where do we put it? So, if so you click on your name, you'll have a manage experience in the pull down. So the total experience points uh, per character for this adventure is 93. 93. 93, okay. yep. So 93. Add XP. Why changes? I think uh, second level, I think, is like 300, something it like is. that. Yep. So. According to D&D Beyond. That's cool. <laughs> So we're still level this one. This podcast not affiliated with D&D Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> Although D&D Beyond is pretty cool. We're still level one, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Good night. Yay. Good night. Thank you. Good Have a good night. night. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review anywhere this podcast can be found. Please tell your friends about Nights of Roleplay and spread the word through social media. We can be found on Twitter at Knights of RP and on Facebook and Instagram at Knights of Roleplay and on our website at knightsofroleplay.com. Your help and support are greatly appreciated.